Hey everyone, it's Tony Vicenda here, uh, joined uh, again by my new best friend, uh, Lloyd Metcalf <laughs> from Fail Squad Games. Uh, actually, like I was super bummed. Yesterday, we uh, we weren't able to get together to do this uh, because I was streaming uh, Hunter's Media, which, I, Lloyd, I don't actually know if you checked out the Gods of Metal uh, project yet. The art splash on that game is phenomenal. Some of the stuff they're doing with the concert posters, the world, other things like that. Uh, it's a heavy metal game. Uh, I'll drop you my link to it that way if you want to check it out okay. later on uh, and you do like it and you want to support it actually anybody go to ttrpg.link slash um, Ragnarok KS and maybe we'll maybe we'll look at it a little bit at the end uh, just so people can see some of the stuff they've done there um, but it's not a zine quest project but it was I'll be honest one of the best role playing experiences I've ever had also too on stream and so really phenomenal game but today we're talking about artisan craft we're talking about the art that makes games great um i even had some amazing experiences this week uh in our game repugnant as we're getting ready to get everything out into the world one of the final mechanics came together but it needed the art to make that happen um and i haven't even seen the fully final sheet but art influences design so much so um i'm not an artist i've got some basic composition skills lloyd tell people who you are so that we have some actual credibility uh, on the stream I have credibility. <laughs> My name is Lloyd Metcalf. I'm the art director for GaryCon. I'm on staff for a number of other conventions across the country. Um, I run my own convention here in Maine when there's no pandemic. Um, I am the CEO of Fail Squad Games. Um, under my banner, I have run 21 Kickstarters now. One got shut down by Wizards of the Coast, so I still I only counted as twenty. That's a win. That's a win. <laughs> Getting shut down by Wizards of the Coast, and so they know who I am. That's fine. And uh, let's see, I, I, just a bunch of other stuff. I've illustrated for a lot of people in the um, OSR industry and the uh, third party publishing world. Um, and I don't know. Whatever I do is what I do. Uh, and we are going to be just looking at some of the projects that are live on Zine Quest right now, but we're not looking at them through game design. We're looking at them specifically through the lens of the art. And so I am super excited to be doing that, uh, to have that conversation. Um, it, it is one of my favorite things about games. Uh, but before we talk about that, Lloyd, tell people a little bit also about the project you have alive right now um, that's well-funded, that's, that's going to be finishing up in the next couple of days. And then I'll talk a little bit about our project that's launching on Monday. Okay. Yeah, I'm over 1,100% uh, funded uh, for a maximum HP. It's the fifth issue of the of the zine um we part of zine quest this year this uh this issue is all about kobolds and it's a old school first edition um system but a lot of it's going to be system agnostic um my friend john larson is writing a entire kobold adventure that goes in the middle called log jam i need to update the page to reflect that um it's got new kobold subspecies traps tricks whatever i could think of like the the zany irritating things that I put into my cobalt games are in here. And I've taken submissions from all sorts of other people outside of the fail squad games bubble and um, plopped it in there. I've got even some art outside of our bubble and it's looking, it's really looking great. I um, it's all like 90% written, but I still got a couple of submissions that are trickling in. So uh, I'm excited to include a ton of content. This might be my fattest one yet. I haven't seen everything in layout format yet and of course fully compatible with kobolds ate my baby right uh from uh from ninth lover is that uh is that true is that what i heard oh i, I don't know I, I i don't know <laughs> have you ever played that game it's a fun beer and pretzels it's rpg that you just you're you're weak kobolds you run around you die uh it actually probably would be really fun once this is up and maybe if you want to come on stream i'll uh, i'll bust out my my copy of kobolds we can bust out this issue uh and we can do some just live hacking uh to see how they fit together uh. Yeah, I love I love Cobalt so much. Um, <laughs> and, and, so, and you know, while while I've been writing the the, the trap section of this, I've I've been written a bunch of traps that are in really like tight tunnels and things, and I've actually had to stop and take a break because I get claustrophobia writing these things. My biggest one of my biggest fears in life is like being stuck underground in a where I can't get out. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I'm I'm super excited for you. You I mean you you've got some you've got a little couple more days. We also know those last two days are incredibly important to a campaign. So hopefully going to be uh you know one of your most successful projects yet and and you know we'll see some some that big thick juicy kobold edition of maximum HP. Um we're well, launching repugnant. Happy, but... Yeah, we're launching repugnant on Monday. Um I'm going to show you guys something at the end of this. I've got our our, our you're going to get the world premiere of our video for this game. Uh Lloyd, you won't be able to see it. You'll have to watch it right afterwards, but it's disgusting. 
Um, but that's the that's the theme of this. It's going to be the world's most disgusting role playing game. Uh, but I am the art by John DeCampos, who is my collaborator on this, is absolutely phenomenal. The system that we've created and the way it fuses art and design together with our heap um, for our covered in chits uh, system that we've created specifically for it. It's a D two system is phenomenal. Um, we'd love to get up to 200 followers over the weekend. So if you have not followed it yet, uh, please, please, please check it out. Also, hey, Scum, uh, thanks for watching over on YouTube. If you're watching right now uh, and there's a project you really love that's live on uh, Kickstarter right now that you love the art of, I want us to talk about. We've got space for one more at the end. Let us know in the chat. Uh, we'd love to cover it. Uh, but remember, think about the art lens specifically. Uh, John's a phenomenal artist to cover, collaborate with. Um, lots of lots of really disgusting things worked out through it. Uh, we just we were just in a meeting, which is why we started a little late today. Uh, just rehashing um, our, our stretch goals and other things like that. Some really cool stuff. I'm excited to share later on. Uh, that said, let's dive into it. We've got um, this first project was one of yours, Lloyd's. It's uh, X Terry, a fantasy uh, X Terry. Exterrary. Exterrary? Exterrary? I'm assuming it's like a extra extraterrestrial sort of like a reference, but it's a fantasy horror RPG, and I picked it because the art is unsettling for me, um, which is the idea. It's nightmarish. It's sketchy. I love this, like... Um, when I paint, I'm often like impressionistic and sketchy and... And I mean, look at the way the layout looks even. It's like, it's nice. It's heavy. It's dark. It's got some spooky stuff that's a little undefined oh. and lets you think that something is going to go wrong, you know? And it's just unsettling. And for a horror nightmare RPG, I'm I'm quite happy with this aesthetic. I, this, uh, this, there's a couple of things that pop out at me on this one. This image uh, about two thirds of the way down of this kind of, out of focus face it's got this crack in the middle but then the, the teeth and the mouth have a sh way sharper focus on them right um mm -hmm. uh, that they come to this like kind of dash it's it is like absolutely disturbing but then that crack is also in sharp focus too uh and then the, these little accents on this layout page of this random encounter table these three faces up in the corner the texturing uh it's all it's all very very solid um yeah i love this and i yeah that's uh the Thinking about what you want your art to affect in the viewer is an absolutely huge part of how you're doing your art in games. So it's something people need to, to think about uh, and consider really, really, really intentionally. Not just is this cool art, but does this cool art match my game? Um, right. And it's not overly complex art. It, it's, it fully conveys an emotion and a message without it being Larry Elmore Dragons. Yeah. Um, I also love that a lot of this is negative space. Like it is black with negative space on it um as the as the actual art is the feel that you get from a lot of this and it's, it's cool mm -hmm. um i pulled up a uh, vampire crusade which i don't think we talked about if i talked about this i would have talked about it in advance um this is uh amanda lee frank's uh project she did um uh, uh you got a job on the garbage barge last year she's also done art for a number of other projects uh, this zine quest uh, patchwork world, which we'll be playing in the middle of the day tomorrow. Um, she did some of the art in that, um, but just a phenomenal artist. And one of the levels I've actually already backed this game. Um, and I'll tell you the level I backed it at. I backed it at the $30 level. Why did I back it at the $30 level? Because it comes with a hand drawn ink sketch of an ancient undead creature to inspire my evil deeds. Uh, these will be about four by seven and arrive tucked into my zine. You can tell people it's your great, great <laughs> evil grandfather. Um, which I, I mean, thirty thirty dollars for a, 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 you know, a zine and a custom piece of art from an artist that I love is, that's like an undervalued pledge level right there. Um, you know, there it was limited, thirty of fifty. So there's a, you know, there's a decision that was made there. Um, and you know, uh, it's probably not going to be the same detail level as everything else. But I, if you will send me art in your zine, I will. That is just for me. I will buy it. Um, every single time. Um, yeah, I used to do that, and it, the, my most successful Kickstarters involved original Sticky Fingers art. It's, a, it's an excellent idea if you have the time to carry it through, but you really have to be careful, work with your artists, and watch your delivery dates because it can, it can kill your delivery time if an artist gets overwhelmed or something. Or I'm hoping that maybe um, this artist has a lot of these already done. Yeah, which is the wise approach. That's the thing. There's no, there's no input on this, right? Amanda could have knocked these out at any point 
while she's working on this project. Could be halfway done, could be already done. We're just getting a piece of art. It's not like she's sitting down and looking at my family tree and saying, how do I want to customize this piece of art for Tony? Um, Correct. And so that, the ability to knock those out in, in bulk is a lot more there. Uh, Billy Blue, we have not covered, we just we just started. We just, this is the first, uh, or the second project we're covering today. So if you want me to look at Explored Dungeons yet, drop that link in for me. We'll talk about it a little bit uh, at the end. Uh, but anyways, I almost ended that one. Oh, yeah? So, there, yeah, Billy, drop it in. Uh, I, I just love, I love Amanda's art, but I also love that, like, this, it's, it's not set in the same thing, but it's another boat adventure, and she brought in a lot of the same feel of the art from You've Got a Job on the Garbage Barge, um, which is creating kind of a consistent representation of the games that Amanda is creating for Zine Quest, which is another just way to visually create an identity for the work that you're doing. So um, I'm very excited about this project. You basically are on a cruise, with a, and you you may be being turned into a vampire. You might be a vampire for part of it. You might be on this cruise for all eternity now, um, welcoming other people into it. It's a very, very good theme. I love Amanda's design. Uh, the video on this is also very good, but um, it's uh, uh, we're not gonna we're not necessarily gonna watch it right now. Uh, any thoughts about this, Lloyd? Any other thoughts? Um, the no, but I, I really like the way that the entire um, pitch and all the art is unified. I, I, I personally struggle with this because halfway through something, I'll come up with like a new trick or some new interest with my sort of chase a squirrel mentality and go in and make it confusing. But gee, this is very, this is really solid. I, I, I like that it stays in the same direction. Um, the art on the Kickstarter and it, my initial knee jerk reaction is like, ah, it's simplistic, but it's not. It's like that cover is stellar. And yeah. uh, I really like that it draws me in with just, yeah, it doesn't, the art doesn't need to be complex to be good. And, and or good is like a subjective, <laughs> that's, you know. But yeah. Whatever. And he, here's another solid example of, a, of somebody taking the rules of Zine Quest and pushing them to their limit, like straight up. Like these are all purplish pink shades right these could all be considered one color even the little eye dot on the vampire right up here at the top of the thing that's the same pink as the the title is then we get in these like kind of darker more purple version of for everything else but that that that's such a solid way to do it and the mix of symmetry and asymmetry on the cover image is it's just it's just perfect um and so really good big fan um uh laura connell let me uh, drop me oh you can't drop links in the chat um Huh. It doesn't matter if they link. I just because I won't. I won't leave. I just need. I'll copy and paste it. So if you can get me the the text for the URL, uh, hit me up with that, and I'll copy and paste it. It doesn't actually have to link. Um, or just uh, message it to me on Twitter because I can check that real quick too. Um. Uh. Next up, we have. Uh, this is another one of mine. Let's grab one of yours. And actually, this is a campaign that they shot me the the layout before uh, they went live, uh, and I gave some some feedback on. Uh, I'm gonna say it's Flots. Miscellany, Volume Two. Uh, this is one of yours, yes. Lloyd. Oh, let me, let me. I gotta. I oh, I closed my window. Give me one second. No worries. I, I like to look at it while I'm talking about yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so the this one is feel or it kind of reads on the skims off the surface as if it's set in London or something like that. Um, the artwork looks. I don't know if it's um, open source art or not, but it looks. It feels that way. But what really drew me into this one is the interior layout. It is so juicy and gravy. I really like these pages um, that are thrown up here as an example. Uh, it's got like a city skyline on the bottom in the middle, outlined areas areas for illustrations, uh, top dividers. It's, it's The layout is really well thought out, two column, um, not justified, which I... And it's growing on me to not justify two column, uh, even though the old school D&D guy that I am almost looks for it. Um, the images in the Kickstarter itself, the, the titles are appealing to me. Um, I, and again, like I'm looking at some of these other layouts and I think I, I can't verify it. Some of these, some of this art looks kind of like it might be public domain, but I don't even care. I love it. I'm a little concerned about he's going to example of page 24 here. That's got a map in the middle and I'm a little concerned about how that's going to look. I'm assuming that's his centerfold. Um, but even still excellent layout. It is just, 
I can't say enough about that layout. I, I I'm I'm taking notes on my own layouts now. Right. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Low O'Connell, I just realized you were talking about Crescent Moon, which I actually have on my list. So we're going to talk about that game already. So uh, don't worry about that. Billy, I do see that you dropped me the other one in the chat. Uh, yeah, no, my big thing on this was there was so much layout on the original campaign that it was like probably four extra scrolls to get through it. And I was like, mm -hmm. I love all this layout. This is all very good layout. You should choose, that, but it's a lot. And so you're then diminishing what you're doing on your campaigns. This is a little bit of a campaign technique. Pick your best examples of layout and feature those. Um, you don't have to feature every good piece of layout you have. Uh, That's true. <laughs> and so, uh, but, but varying it up, picking maps on some, picking, you know, art on some, picking some that aren't quite finished, but give a sense of what they do. Like letting people see the work process is actually really good. Yeah. Some of this is, a lot of this is public domain. Um, but a lot of it's not also too, I think. And so, mm -hmm. um, this is not their first one. You can get some of the earlier stuff. I know that, um, through Eltan's door, um, which I oh mean, if we didn't talk about through Eltan's door, we should have because the crouch on that is great. But neither one of us can remember what we talked about two, two weeks ago or a week ago or whenever we did this last. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, uh, is it only two weeks into Zine Quest? Oh, um, uh, yeah, Floats Miscellany. I I'm a big fan of it. Um, it's not my art style. Um, I like all the individual images. I like the layout of it. Um, the cover and I would say the header image are the two pieces that I just that didn't do it for me, um, right. which is sad. The cover isn't bad. It's just not it's, it's not exciting to me, but it actually matches the feel of everything well, and I wouldn't change a thing on it. The cover the, the cover image for the project, um, it feels like three different things put together, which it is. Um, and I would want it to see a little bit more of a cohesive feel for that, but I, I think they're hitting the kind of the rainy feel of the space really strongly on that. Um, mm -hmm. But not in a way that screams Victorian like the rest of everything else does for me. But um, yeah, gorgeous project. Um, and so yeah, and again, I, I chose it because of the layout. I, yeah. I, I mean, art is art is. I mean, of course, the arts. You know, but it was the layout that dragged me right into it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up, I have Superstition. Have you looked at this one yet? It's a solo journaling RPG about creating rituals you don't actually believe in for the sake of your community. As somebody who is uh, who is deeply religious, who is uh, who is deeply into ritual, who uh, absolutely loves games, um, but also I one of my favorite things in games is to create rituals of play. Uh, so I love the theme of this game for a lot of different reasons. Uh, let's set that aside. I love the art of this game also too. Um, and so, uh, uh, if you guys haven't checked this out, um, I just think it's, it's a gorgeous work. I love, I love this cover. I love the way they use it in their header image. I love this moon cycle piece. I love that it's used in different ways, um, in different pieces of art that it's in different phases of the moon. Um, I just think this is a gorgeous little black and white zine that, um, I want to have, I, I mean, <laughs> like, um, some of them are very, like very simple sketch works. Uh, other things are very refined, um, but um, I am somebody who, and I, I would consider everybody to do this. I like the concept of how do people know we're starting play. My my game design ethos is um, uh, create the world, open the world, enter the world, explore the world, uh, close the world, uh, exit the world, close the world, and move on. And so it's it, it's this constant kind of ritualized process, and you need to know how to do that. Um, uh, one of my one of my uh, our regular uh, players on the stream, Alex Murray, is watching right now. He and I are both uh, religion buffs, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, I love to do it. I love to create things that you intone at the beginning of play, or processes for the end of play that are more reflective about what you've done, and uh, a little bit narrative that that kind of close things off in a really re uh, satisfying way it's not what this game is about but a game that plays around with witch rolls is absolutely something i love and, I, and like i said simple art but i love it what are your thoughts lloyd well first anything that's has a pen and ink sketchy feel i'm i'm immediately in um so i i also am a big fan of the art and i like that this cover image has a really heavy dark area and a light area it um it, it gives you a nice break to look at it. It feels, it, it really stands out. And solo journaling RPG. Like, I, I don't know what it is that's exciting me about that, those those words put together, but I, I like it. And, it. and yeah, that this art style is um, in my wheelhouse of things that I do and things that I enjoy because it, it gives you a, a, 
a visceral shake and a feeling and um, conveys like it, it's not quite complete. Um, in the earlier RPG world, this was a little more common. It makes you think like, uh, this, is, this is like the things that I draw when I'm in math class, you know, and I want it. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I am somebody who I only buy solo journaling RPGs physically. I will not buy a digital version of it. I'm not, I'm not into that, that at all. I'll buy modules and, uh, information games, but if it's a system or if it's, and if it's a solo RPG specifically, I want it, I want to be able to hold it. I want to be able to write it and I want to be able to interact with it. Um, but I also don't ever play them. Like, which is the word is like, I have, a, I have a whole <laughs> slew of them. Um, but I also feel like I would play this one to explore it, to explore what it's doing. And I would actually be kind of mining it for uh, world building ideas. I haven't actually hit back on this one yet. I need to do that um, uh, to make sure that I, I don't miss out on that. So um, let's see. Uh, let's get another one of yours in here. Uh, we have the City of the Red Pox as our next one. Yeah, this one really has a has a striking sort of aesthetic. I, I mean, at first... <sighs> The splash image on the page makes me think somebody's using photos and stuff, and I'm kind of like, mm. but then once I started looking at the art on the interior, I got more excited. Yeah. About halfway down, there's this thing, this section called Enemies that shows a stellar piece of art, and I don't know if it's a photo bashed image or how this artist works. Honestly, I don't care. We get to the mood that I want on that image alone. Um, that centerfold is kind of making me want to back this zine no matter what. Yeah. I am. Um, I, that image, I remember looking at this image a couple of days ago and, and I tell you why I remember. And if you guys ever noticed me nitpicking about something, it's always the same thing. It's um, how, how people put text on images. It's one of the things I am the most picky about because it's one of the only things I know how to do. Uh, and so um, I actually love the font choice for the header for that enemies page and for almost everything else they do in here. Their font choices are so solid. The handwritten piece, I want it to be slightly more script, uh, slightly narrower, um, and actually a little bit less obvious. Um, like I want it to be easily readable, but a little bit less stand out. Um, but I, I do like this image itself is just so, so stellar, so phenomenal. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I do remember looking through this one. And also, even their cover, like their cover mock up, um, what they've done, like I said, whether that's, whether that's Kit Bash or not, like, yeah, that's, cover a, that's a super so evocative, like, <laughs> feel to it. That, that strong black space outlining the sun as part of either this person's body or their crown. I don't know. Um, but like, it does, like, it's, it's a very exciting image to me. Um, and I actually like that. I feel like these images, and I think this is good progression. I think these images get more and more exciting. So you want to build excitement as people scroll down. I, I think this game does a really phenomenal job of that. Um, yes. Yeah, so well done, Benjamin Wenham. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, excellent. So next, uh, that's superstition again. That's not what I wanted. Um, we are going to look at Paranormal Inc. Uh, this is one of my cho choices. I've already backed this one. Uh, this is a GMless role-playing game about struggling paranormal investigators. Uh, the concept is that ghosts appear. Uh, and take and, and become normal in the world. Uh, tons of paranormal investigators pop up. Then people kind of get over the fact that ghosts are in the world and just learn to live with them and don't care about the need have the need for paranormal investigators anymore. And you are trying to solve uh, problems. It is uh, a Brindlewood uh, Bay hack, so it's carved from Brindlewood. Uh, but I just love again. Uh, I love watching people. This is all blue blue tones and black. Um, taking that that one color limitation but doing it in the broadest scope possible of just all blues. I think that also matches what they're doing really well. I also love that the, the opening image, which is very Brindlewood um, are it's, it's an all female um, set of art, which I love uh, and just seeing, you know, uh, not just, you know, dudes with beards. I, I mean, who everybody knows I love dudes with beards. I am a dude with a beard, um, but I just love, I love the art in this, this character sketch halfway down um, is just absolutely uh, like, gorgeous and evokes the mood of the game so well uh their headers are so down their 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 layout is tight um it, like it's really good uh information hierarchy on the page i love the bottom uh, little piece um uh, i'm i'm a, i'm a i've not played it but i love the system um you you don't you don't there's not a solution to the mystery um you guys you build clues you tell the story and then you roll at the end to see how close your solution was to to like to being right, um, like there. But again, it's based on the die roll, not on 
anything besides that. And so, um, which some people hate, I love. Um, but what are your thoughts about it? Uh, well, I agree with uh, the, the cartoony style speaks out. It stands out. It, it's be, and it's um, it's a strong cartoon style. So like it's it's a very stylized. It's not going to mix in with the crowd. And I'm a little concerned looking at the layout part way down about the black text on the gray. The gray might be a little heavy in the box for the example scene, but that's a minor. And I'm sure on print that'll get it that'll get adjusted for clarity. So I'm not even sweating it. Um, and it attributes the, the, the there's a pretty good looking team here. Um, and they've I mean, a lot of people are contributing and making this thing happen. It looks like it's really going to shine. Yeah. Phenomenal project. Um, uh, people in the gauntlet community, which is where I first found out about this game, uh, are super excited about that. But we're we're all big Brindlewood fans in there. Uh, Chris is on there as an art, as, as and Alicia does uh, phenomenal work. Uh, yeah, just really solid team. Uh, and then um, let's see, we've got um, oh, Rackham, got Rackham. Rackham Vale. Let's talk about Rackham a little bit because Rackham, uh, I want to say James Rackham is um, a UK artist from like the 20s and 30s. I, I might get a lot of this information wrong. I'm just whipping it off the top of my head. But he's well known for fairy tales and the his pen and inks with the watercolor washes. So this is public domain art. But I really like that the entire thing is centered around Rackham's art. Like it's like highlighting this great artist that inspired so many gaming illustrators. And it's picked some of his best works that are in public domain and made a, a really cool looking product all around it. Yeah. So it can't go wrong. And like the layout, the content sec layout, like partway down the page is just so cool looking. Um, I don't even know what's in it, but for the aesthetic and the layout examples and stuff, like this is a prime example of how to use public domain art to make a great RPG product. Right. Um, and, um, uh, and actually I want to talk about that in just one second. I'm, I'm looking for a, a creator, Real quick, there's another project that I actually think may have been, been the one who recommended uh, uh, Crescent Moon real quick. Um, how do you spell Hieronymus Bosch? Hmm. Uh, oh, the art of Arthur Rackham. Okay, it's right on the title, and I, I'm not even reading it. I there, yeah, using... there's some of it on there. You're, you're, yeah, you are, you are. Uh, um, I, I, I was tracking with you. No, no, no. Well, I, I mean, this is by, I was looking at earlier today, I was watching James Gurney videos. So I, I crossed my signals in my brain. Um, let's see. I really want to find this real quick. All right. Well, while I'm talking, while I'm looking up that, we're going to talk about another project. Cause you know, I think this project looks stunning. Um, I love the layout on this. I love the idea of taking that. I want to come back to that in just one moment uh, with a project. Sure. It's not a zine quest project that I want to talk about, but Crescent Moon uh, is the, the, the last one I had for sure. Um, uh, I pulled up a couple other ones just in case nobody had any suggestions, but we did have some suggestions, so we'll talk about those instead. Um, uh, but this also came as a suggestion from the chat. Uh, first of all, anyone who takes the Zine Quest logo and changes it to their color scheme to work it into their their thing, uh, kudos to you. Uh, thank you for uh, for taking uh, what Kickstarter has has done and making it your own. This is actually uh, I love this this incarnation that they've they've slapped on here. Uh, of the Zine Quest logo to match their kind of color scheme. But I just, I love this. I mean, this immediately caught my attention due to the art on the cover image. Um, as we follow a page, um, we see more of this kind of like uh, rough, um, I, I have no idea what to call it. I would say like almost like um, uh, crayon, but this very soft look, right, to the to the images um, that continues on through the entire thing. Uh, I actually really love this bl soft blue layout. Um, there's something very old school about it. Uh, but also, uh, I just like the the way it actually matches what they've created on here. Um, uh, if I was going to ask a question, it would actually be why they use the strong red for the headers. Um, but that's that's just a question. I don't I don't it doesn't bother me. Uh, they just went so so blue and soft with everything else with those vibrant reds. I'm I'm just curious if there was a choice there. Um, but anyways, I I just think it's a gorgeous thing. I actually have not read anything about this project at all yet. 
Um, but everything about it visually was very, very attractive to me. It's Emma Acosta. Um, uh, but it's an RPG adventure about brave children and their dreams, shadows, and discoveries. Um, so, uh, Lloyd, what are your thoughts on this project? I really like the look of layout of the character sheet, and I am thinking that Emma Acosta, who created the campaign, is a Crystal Gems fan, and I hope that's true because I'm a huge fan of that cartoon. It just the cover reminds me of the Crystal Gems, uh, 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 Steven Universe. I'm sorry. I'm a fan of the characters more than I am the show, I think. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I really like the character sheet. It's nice and clean. Like it, it it's uh and I and I like simplifying systems, um, which is like part of the appeal of zines. So yeah, it looks great. I don't mind the orange headers. I think it I think it works fine. I, I, but it still I don't has mind that. it. Like I was I'm just I, I feel like there's a choice that got made there, and I want to know what that choice is. Um not there's no complaint. Uh, right. It, so it, it's clearly digital art, though, but it's obviously textured digital art. And like you said, it carries through and it it sells what I'm getting. Yeah. Um, here we go. I'm going to. I'm going to drop you on Facebook real quick, Lloyd, uh, a, a link to an itch account so that you can look at it. Uh, OK, so we can talk about this project and we are going to embarrass uh, Lori, who's in the chat right now, um, who's got Lichcraft up right now on on Zine Quest, but I am just super excited about this project um, that uh, she has over on Itch, um, and it's it's a Hieronymus Bosch uh, exploring strange uh, land, uh, worldscapes. Oh um, yeah, and it's taking all of Bosch's stuff, but just check out some of the layout um, on on this and some of the design choices that. Uh, Lloyd May, it's just, just so, 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 so good. Uh, you can buy this um, on Itch right now digitally. Um, uh, Lloyd has a um, uh, print run for the UK uh, that I think um, I think is in right now. Lloyd O'Connell, let me know um, if if the when the when the stuff is coming to the UK, and then I'll I'll share the other exciting bit of news, um, which is that we are also going to have print copies of this in stock at plus one um, on our webpage um, also too. Cause I, when I saw this game, I saw that uh, Laura was working towards um, a, a print of the book. And I just said, how much would that cost? Uh, <laughs> like, cause, cause I wanted to hold it. Um, and so, uh, and we, we have it in mind at plus one that we want to be supporting, um, supporting creators. Uh, and like, here's the reality is a couple hundred bucks can mean a lot to a creator. Um, you know, it can mean a print run, it can mean art, it can mean the ability to focus for a week on do, working more on the game. I mean, it can buy you a lot. And so to be able to say, look, how do we support uh, uh, things? Um, so right now, if you want this in your in the UK watching, you get it at Rook's Press. Uh, Lori's storefront also, too, um, has it as well. Um, and uh, and then we'll have it. It'll be uh, Spear Witch, uh, Floating Chair, and Plus One. Uh, we'll all have it in the U.S. You know who I think you should order it from, but that's whoever whoever you do is fine uh, because it's a, it's a going to be a phenomenal and beautiful game. But just uh, the art and layout choices, the, the theme behind the game, running across Bosch paintings, um, uh, is it's I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. So um, uh, just just in the vein of talking about other projects that are done with public domain art, it's surprising to me that more hasn't been done with Bosch's stuff and. Oh yeah, I mean he's like he's unsettling and naughty at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's 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 super. It's every one of his paintings are one of those things that pulls you right in, and because there's a there's something bizarre happening in every square inch of the canvas, and it's all so well thought out, and uh, just so just the visual imagery of it. But yeah, being chased by the the astral terror known as the follower through Bosch paintings, like. I'm ready to play that. Yeah. And some and and the archetypes that Lori's created are just phenomenal. Like they're just so it's so good. Uh, and correction, it'll be Project Nerves, John Bat's um uh floating chair and plus one in the US. Um and so um by the way, John uh we was just talking about we were talking about John earlier. Uh I just got uh my body is a cage. Like this is this is the kind of stuff that uh that Bats puts out. Like this like this it's also I got the soft touch on my books. Um his soft touch is so much softer than mine. Uh so these this book feels really Feels like a body, um, but just these big, wide, gorgeous pages, solid layout. Um, 
like, anyways, this is a John, one of, one of, one of Bats's projects. Um, and so anyways, just another, another example of just using and taking existent art and then building a world and a universe around it, which again, can, is such a, is such a good, if you're a designer looking and trying to figure out what you want to do for art, such a solid, uh, play. Let's see here. We had, uh, let's, we got time for one more. Here we go. Um, at least one. Uh, did we talk about old school and cool? I like old school and cool. I can't remember. What was the one that Billy Blue was talking about? Uh, no, I I, no, th that's, th that's not it. I, I'd pulled up old school and cool too. Explore Dungeons oh, oh. is the one he had talked about. A system neutral uh, RPG zine, jam packed with cool new stuff, new monsters, uh, magic maps, adventures, random tables, and art. Um, so again, good reason to, to talk about it. This is the second one they've done. Uh, both of them have these kind of door images on the front, but it's ex uh, Zine Quest 3, Explore Dungeons, zine number two uh, is the... Uh, the um the project name um we're doing it again um oh man this uh this uh the uh, the cover image um doesn't initially make me excited i'm actually way more excited about issue number two than i am exci excited about issue number one though they both are cool um i've expressed like my feelings about how text is and i'm uh, overly picky about that um and that's that's why the top image the door itself i love um uh and would keep i would keep going but this first image, what's in the book, uh, is is killer. Uh, it's so, there's so much happening in this picture that I love. Uh, it is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely amazing. Yeah. It, well, you know, and it's one of those, it's another example of all illustrations don't need to be uh, literal illustrations. Right. You know? So like anatomy and stuff, you know, if if I were to, if I were to look at this as like a classic illustration or a classic draftsmanship, like it doesn't matter. It's conveying an emotion, so it does a better job, actually, as it as it is. I like that it's it's, it's dark and heavy. It's got the shocking hands, the white hands are sticking out of there. Yeah, it's a striking image. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I kind of want some text on that image to explain to me a little bit of what it is, but it's fine. Yeah, your basic it's, uh, the, the text, subtext is your basic dimension hopping, time traveling, sad, sado or sadomancer, um, right. skiz. Um, but yeah, I mean, I also would say like I would love to see like especially if the, it's if, especially if the art is a major function of a zine, like if it's an art zine, I want to see another image on here this, this page. Um, this this yeah. initial one is so good. Uh, but I want I want you to show me, not tell me as much. Um, it, it, well, it might be one of those cases where we need to get some money to make sure our artist gets paid. I'm 100% so. on board with that. And so, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, no critique. Actually, I, what I would even say is if there's a good way to, to feature the art from number one. So if this is number two, maybe create a solid divide down here that shows some of the work from number one, uh, especially mm -hmm. since there's a there's a pledge option that has number one and number two in it. Um, and yeah, so, we did a third video that, um, going into like art and commissioning art with folks. And one of the, one of the options that maybe some artists don't realize is that if you're having a tight budget and you want to get an artist, sometimes you can give them a, a retainer of a few bucks to do some quick thumbnail sketches for you. Mm -hmm. And you can use those in a Kickstarter to say, help us get funded so we can finish our artwork. It's kind of a good way to pitch it, but not shortchange your artist, but still get to the end, you know? Yeah. And even let me let me show you like so John is uh, John is not um, uh, John is not I'm not paying John I have paid John numerous times for art and I'm not not paying him because I don't want to pay John I'm not paying him because we're collaborators on the project uh, that he brought that he brought to me right um, and so uh, I w I'll show you guys just last night you know he was he was really struggling with our character sheet um, uh, I'll have to figure out how to draw both of these to you in a second Lloyd. Um, but I'm going to open them up digitally so I can just share them with people. Um, and his, you know, his quick sketch, and then John goes back and refines everything. So he can send me an idea. And the idea, you know, for our character sheet is uh, this. Let me let me drop both of these to you, Lloyd, so you can see them. Um, bah, and yeah, there you go. You know, this, this is his quick sketch, right? Oh, so if you're, yeah, you're looking at the stream? And so, yeah. Yeah, so we've got this as the quick sketch, right? Um, and then we've got the finalized version um, of the of this of it, which is take, which he took you know a longer time with. Now this is just, but it also clarifies what was happening. There was a couple things on the original one I couldn't figure out what exactly were, but I love the look of. And then here is this 
this final version, right? Which clarifies right. that this isn't spinal cord stuff over here. These are zits that are popping and, and shooting and, pus out. That um, this is the bag being held where exactly the fingers are, um, yeah. you know, other stuff like that. Now, this is all, you know, our game is all about being gross. Uh, so if you don't like this image, if you find it slightly mildly disturbing, mission, mission accomplished, right? <laughs> and so, uh, uh, and so, like, this is this is kind of what, uh, what we were going for, but just the difference between those. And so, you know, John can spend a little bit of time getting you to this level where this is the general idea about what I want to do. And if you put this on a Kickstarter page and showed me some of the work in progress art, I would be excited by this. And a lot of artists will charge you a lot less for this kind of conceptual work than they will for the actual refined work that goes into the finished project, especially when you're going through and doing a lot of line work or a lot of hatch work or a lot of other stuff like this, this is something that's much easier to produce and, and that still shows you what you're getting into. Uh, you just got to make sure you clarify it um, on your thing, on your, on your project. So oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You don't want to put it, th an artist doesn't want you to put their, their concepts, thumbnails up as finished art either, you know? Right. So yeah, well they do if, if it has that disclaimer of, you know, here's the work in progress, help us get funded so we can make sure our artists get paid. I, I love it too. I, I'm, but I, I don't know, but maybe it's, maybe it's the way my brain works. Um, but I really enjoy looking through an artist's lens of their, their quick sketches and just to see the process, to see that it's in motion, you know? All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, you guys are going to get a world premiere for our last couple of minutes and then uh, um, of our video, our, 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 our uh, Kickstarter video. So this has gone up a couple places. We put it up a couple places on Facebook. This is the first place it's coming out live. Um, I'm actually going to show it. So, so, Lloyd, you can see the stream right now, right? Is that correct? Uh, yep. All right, cool. I'm going to play it. Uh, you may want to hit mute real quick because I don't know how it's going to interact. Oh, I, I, yeah, I am muted. So okay, cool. I, I don't know. We'll have a big old echo. All right, here we go. Ready? Welcome to this picturesquely putrid place, oozing with filth and garbage and planetary fluid known as the Crust. It's a complex cluster of cruddy communities inhabited by diverse and disgusting dwellers. Beast malformed <laughs> with a myriad of messy mutations. Just normal folks trying to pick their way through the day. Popping dust filled problems, overcoming obscene obstacles, and filling time with their filthy friends. But it's not all farts and flicking boogers here. The crust is filled with fabulously heated scenes of all sizes and secretions. If an RPG where the goal is gross, causes your stomach to squirm with speculation, oh. then it's time to pop some skips and fling some chips on whatever earwax and crusted enemies and turgid traps the collector throws at you in repugnant, the world's most disgusting RPG. Nice. Yeah, so that is our uh, that is our Kickstarter video uh, for uh, uh, for Repugnant. We go live on Monday. Uh, I'd love any feedback anyone has who's watching right now. But I'd love I'd love your thoughts. I know we don't we're not talking about videos, but that video is so art heavy. Um, you know that's going to give people a sample and kind of taste of John's John's art throughout the course of it. Which it's a it's a the book is fifty percent game, fifty percent art. Like well, um, I, what am I? I mean, I, I have a little degree in communications. I mean. I think it's a great video. It's put together great. I, I love that you used, that you animated it. You used carry, it looks like you used, maybe used a uh, Chanimate or something like that. Um, it's got, yeah, tons of art in it. And the art is great. And it still reminds me of Garbage Pail Kids all grown up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but it's like, it's it's stellar. That's a great video. I, I am, uh, I always say that a Kickstarter needs a video. Kickstarter says that their projects, they, they encourage doing videos even if you do a simple video, a Kickstarter will do better, but that's a great video. Yeah. Uh, we, it's been, it's been a lot of fun to do. I wrote the script for it. I did it. I did 
I did not do the final voiceover. Uh, we had a, a professional do that, but I like recorded the audio so that we could get a sense of like flow and timing. Kicked it over to to John to work with uh, a bunch of people from Terrible Games who are uh, part of the organization there who helped put it all together. Uh, so absolute kudos to them uh, on on just taking and again really really solid use of like some stock footage with animation and some layers and lenses to do some very very cool. Uh, basic effects to make something really special. And so, um, you know, a video like that, um, and here's the thing, this is just for clarity for people. A video like that can run you anywhere between, depending on who you hire, 150 to $1,500. So, like, just... Just make sure you're sourcing out. You're making intentional choices. Um, like we did, we paid way closer to the bottom of that that end than we did to the top end. But it's because it was internal. Um, but uh, right. yeah, just you just got to consider those things. Like there's a lot of digital artists out there that are that are actually pretty good at other pieces of the Adobe suite. So sometimes you can just ask your you know ask what an artist that you've already contracted like, hey, can you do can you turn this into a, a Chanimate character or something like that? And sometimes uh, they can, and mm -hmm. sometimes you can get it done on the cheap. Um, the, the reason that I'm able to do stuff, the stuff that I do is just because I you keep switching hats, you know, and if you really want to do um, a more solid video, if, if you have more time than money, there's a spend a little time on YouTube and you can figure it out. No, I uh, like I said, I I think there's there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. There's even stuff a lot now with two D. We can you can take two D layers and you can make three D effects to them, and you can actually push through. Did that last year on on uh, beards and beyond with some of our art just to give it a little bit of a sense of motion and movement as yep. the characters are happening. There's a, there's a lot of very simple things that most people can actually manage to do themselves. Once you mm -hmm. have the basic art assets, you can hop on Premiere, grab some YouTube videos. Uh, figured out but there's also people who will you know sit down and you know you don't want a boring video like i would say a, a no video is better than a bad video um but um if you can do something even if it's you sitting down for 15 seconds with and saying here's what this project is here's why we're excited about it here's why we need your help please back it like that kind of personal appeal can be a very solid way to do things so um I, i'm but so I mean, excited about so much of what we've got on this project though. Trying our games just as slideshows yeah yeah and it works yeah. And so like, and, and it's, that's where we started. Like we were like, ah, oh, worst case scenario, we'll just kind of do a slideshow before we were able to work in all the animated effects. And so, um, yeah, it just turned out inc incredibly, incredibly well. And, uh, we, we just got it last night. So, um, I'm, you know, I was excited to, to share it with people. So, um, all right. Thanks so much. Uh, tell people again one more time. Uh, and like I said, you said, we've got uh, repugnant launching on Monday. It's ttrpg.link slash gross RPG. Uh, please follow that. Uh, please consider backing. Um, and then you've got maximum HP right now, which is all about kobolds. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's going into its last like 72 hours, right? Yep. And we're doing backer kit. Uh, I haven't used backer kit for quite a while, but I'm doing it again. So, uh, you can get back issues and everything, uh, when we send out the survey, but in there, you can also get back issues as part of your backing right from the get go. Uh, we've got the first 15 off the press that I'm signed are signed and numbered as collectibles. There are. Um, what else? There's our ad space. Um, I, I added, put an ad space in here. So there's, there's like tons of stuff there. Five issues of it exist and I'm pretty proud of all of them. If you want more information, maximumhp.com has other maximum HP stuff and failsquadgames.com. Awesome. Uh, and we are going to be back next Thursday. We'll be talking again about, um, uh, different projects that we love the art on. If you have suggestions for that, please let us know. Uh, this is part of our zine questing series. Sometimes we overlap uh, on games um, and we'll we'll cover them, you know, uh, I'll, I'll cover them another time, but we'll come back and talk about the art specifically because Lloyd loved it or because I loved it and want to talk about the art some more. Um, and so, you know, just keep an eye on that. We're streaming pretty much every day. Yesterday I took a break because I streamed two five-hour ish actual plays <laughs> instead and so uh we will be on tomorrow doing a normal episode of zine questing uh and then sunday i will be taking family time other than what i'm doing to prep for our launch of repugnant on monday but you can find everything we do at plus one exp uh online or plus one exp.com uh beards and beyond orders from last zine quest have started arriving at people's houses so if you are back around that make sure you fill out the backer kit if not you can get those at plus one exp.com uh, if you don't have a beard and you've always wondered what it's like. This is the role-playing game for you. This isn't just for people with beards. It's basically a beard tabletop 
simulator experience of the epic type of lives that bearded individuals lead. So uh, feel free to go check it out. Uh, Lloyd, we're that going right here. The soul patch is an important part of beard culture. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the bottom goatee is also too. Uh, where do people find fail squad games on social media, Lloyd? Uh, well, uh, Facebook fail squad games and on Twitter at fail squad games, and they're all linked together on the website, fail squad games.com. Awesome. Uh, we're going to wave at the camera until, uh, I didn't stream them. <laughs>